start by pausing this recording and reading carefully through this question on waves. So what we have here is a wave traveling along a taut wire and the wave is described by this equation. Let's start by considering this equation a bit more carefully. So what it's saying is that y, which is the vertical displacement of the wire, is a function of x, so the horizontal position along the wire, and t, so it varies over time. And it's given by this expression 1.5 sine 0.1x minus 560t. Uh, let's start by sketching this. So if we plot or sketch very roughly our vertical displacement y as a function of the horizontal position along the wire, so this is our wire here, then it varies as a sine wave. So it's going to look roughly like that, it's a very rough sketch. So already we know something about this wave. Um, a sine function varies between minus 1 and 1. So the maximum value this function can take will be given by our constant out the front of this expression. So that will be 1.5 there. And the minimum value it can take, which is down there, will be minus 1.5. So straight away we can say the amplitude of our wave, which is the maximum displacement, will be given by 1.5 and our units was in centimetres, so the amplitude is 1.5 centimetres. So now let's compare the expression that we've got here to the general expression for a travelling sinusoidal wave, as you may have seen it written in textbooks and in your lectures. So y, as a function of both x and t, is the amplitude times the cosine of kx minus omega t. So we're considering a wave moving in the positive x direction. So the things that we have in this expression here we have k which is called the wave number and that is calculated by 2 pi divided by the wavelength lambda and we also have the angular frequency and omega the angular frequency is found by 2 pi divided by the period of the wave so again we could roughly sketch this so we could have y sketched as a function of x and this time we have a cosine, so it's going to look roughly like that. So as you can see, these sketches are very similar, and these expressions that we have are very similar. So the only difference is that we have a kind of phase shift here. So one wave is shifted slightly compared to the next. So what we can actually do is rewrite our original wave in terms of that looks a little bit more like this. So including that phase shift, we can rewrite it as 1.5 cos of 0.1x minus 560t minus pi over 2, which is this phase shift here between the two waves. So now if you couldn't see it before, you should be able to see it now, but our k value here will be equivalent to the constant that we have in our expression here. So we know that the wavelength is given by 2 pi divided by k from rearranging this expression down here. So that will be 2 pi divided by 0 0.1, which gives us 20 pi, which if we work that out on a calculator, gives us 62.8 and our units is centimeters, as we're told up here. Doing the same with the angular frequency and our constant here and equating those, we can say that the period of the wave will be 2 pi divided by omega. Again, just rearranging that expression there. So that will be 2 pi divided by 560, which again, typing that into a calculator, gives 0 0.01122 seconds. And finally, we're asked to find the wave speed, where wave speed v is given by f lambda, which will be equal to the frequencies 1 over the period. So that will be lambda divided by t. So we just need to divide our answers from part B and part C of this question. So sticking everything into meters, so 0 0.628 divided by 0 0.01122, or obviously save your answers on the calculator to avoid rounding errors. And that gives the answer 56 meters per second.